There are very few times in life where you can pinpoint a significant event in your life triggering a larger chain of events. And for me personally, I still remember the day that Hello Rock View came out and how my friends and I in high school truly all connected with Les and Jake's unique blend of ska and punk and helped bring punk music from the inner city out to the suburbs. Fast forward almost 30 years later, maybe even longer, almost 30 years, something like that, yeah where we live in a world where there is an official punk rock museum located down the freeway from me in Las Vegas that will be celebrating its one year anniversary on March 1st, 2024. Not only that, but to bring it a full, all full circle, I get to speak to a man who helped make both of these big life events happen. Today I'm speaking with Vinny Fiorello, who not only was a co-founding member of Less Than Jake, but he's also instrumental in working with the Punk Rock Museum. Oh, and for punk fans, you may also remember that record label or be familiar with the record label Fueled by Ramen, which Vinny also co-founded. So he's had a pretty rad career to this point, and he still has some very cool stuff coming down the pipeline. So, hey, Vinny, how are things going? You know what? I, 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 after listening to that, I, I, I should be tired. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, I, I feel good, man. The idea of the Punk Rock Museum uh, happened a little bit after uh, sort of the shutdown for COVID. Yep. And Fat Mike had reached out and said, hey, I'm, I'm thinking about uh, uh, doing a store called the Vegas Punk Shop. Uh, and he knows that, like, with Less Than Jake, I was uh, very, very much a merch nerd, sure. right? When it comes to, like, you know, Less Than Jake we did. Uh, you know, cheese shaped record. We did inflatables. We did toys. So, of course, if someone asked me to do some merch designs and some merch ideas uh, for a punk shop, I was like, dude, I'm totally in. He goes, okay, I'll, I'll get back to you in a few days. So, a few days goes by. He had called me and said, hey, remember the punk shop? I go, yep. He goes, well, it's not a punk shop anymore. It's the punk rock museum because we had talked about you know, adding some artifacts, but why just add a little bit of artifacts? Let's do a museum. Yeah. I'm like, all right. He's like, are you still in? I go, yeah, I'm totally in. Right. So, you know, there was six of us that, you know, uh, out of, out of nowhere formed, uh, the, the beginnings of what is now called the punk rock museum. And that's 12,000 square feet of five decades of punk rock on two and a half floors in Las Vegas, Nevada. And, it's pretty awesome to be involved. Uh, to be honest, like, there's nothing that prepares you for, hey, we're going to start a museum from nothing. Uh, and you have to, you know, build it from the ground up. And, and we did. It took uh, almost three years to put together. And then it's been open for a year uh, on April 1st, as you mentioned. So, Whew. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah, so I mean, I've been there a couple times. I actually visited with uh, Sam King of Get Dead and of the co-defendants, and and he took me through and kind of showed me some stuff. And you know, it was pretty awesome to see all this stuff that's in there. Now, when you guys are obviously starting this concept, you know, they they they've got stuff like you know, when I first saw it, let's put it this way, when I first saw it, I saw a post about like, hey, if you got flyers and posters and magazines from the the genre. Like, hit us up. We're going to put these in the Punk Rock Museum. And I was like, well, that can't be all that it is, right? It can't just be flyers and magazines. Like, that's a museum, but, like, that's just flyers, right? Like, that's like, – anybody can look up flyers digitally. So then when I actually saw what was coming later, the Pennywise room, the Pennywise garage, where they're – you know, the practice room and everything like that, you get to play in the actual jam room actual guitars and, and bass guitars from, you know, legendary musicians and keyboards, I believe as well. So there's tons of stuff in there. There's a tattoo shop, a, a, a wedding chapel, you know, a bar, the triple down saloon is there. There's, if you're a punk fan, I mean, there's definitely something for you to do in the punk rock, punk rock museum. And you could stay there for a while. How did these kinds of conversations happen? How did you guys decide about getting all this stuff in? You, you know what? Uh, it, it slowly, Right. Because at first you start to identify like who who, and and when. Right. Because depending on who you talk to, it, it really it, it, it's definitely like a four to six years of the start of punk rock music. Yeah. Right. So you start to go, well, you know, literally it could be the sort of prototype punk. You know, it's MC5 and it led into the Ramones in New York. And at first you start to like uh just talk amongst yourselves. What do you think? And you start to make a case for for 
the collection, yeah. right? Okay, if we started here and then we went from New York to London, you know, to, to uh, Southern California for the 80s and you start to move through in this like sort of timetable of bigger scenes, uh, it starts to fall into place pretty good, but everybody has an opinion on it. Everybody. So when we started to put together the collective of yeah, of people that were that were looking for artifacts and uh, weekly we would talk about it. It would be, hey, I I found this thing from X band. Where would that go? Well, they're still active, but they started in the eighties. So how do you figure that out? And slowly but surely, once you start to pull that thread, a whole a whole thing starts to yeah. happen behind that thread. And uh, it, the, the the ultimate thing for me was that the importance of when someone would go, well, well you have to have a bar. Yep. <laughs> and then a few people are like, oh, no, the bar is bullshit. There's no way. And then. You see people get, you know, very passionate. It, it's a, it's the punk rock museum. It has to have a bar. And then same way for me. We don't want the tattoo shop. I'm like, if it's the punk rock museum, it should have a tattoo yeah. shop, right? And uh, people take up that you know, this sort of torch of, of what they really wanted out of the museum. You know, Mike was always, we have to have a place for people to pick up guitars from punkers and play those guitars. And I thought to myself when he said that, I was like, no one's going to allow us to do yeah. that. No one's going to give us a guitar and say, hey, let anybody that comes upstairs play it. But I was wrong. I was wrong. People were stoked. You know, Joan Jett? Yeah, sure. No problem. Like, let people play the guitar. You know, uh, Fletcher from Pennywise. Not only the guitar, but the, the, the amp that goes along with it, too. Yeah. And uh, Wesley Willis's keyboard. Yeah. Uh, and I, I never thought that that would be an okay thing, but it turned out to be, that's one of the things that people are drawn to. Hey, I can play Mike from MXPX's bass right yep. here. Yeah, you sure can. I could play Fat Mike's bass. Yeah, it's right yeah. here. You know, uh, it goes down w wasted youth's guitar. Yeah. It, it, you can pick it up, play it. Tim Armstrong guitar. Yeah. You, you can play that yep. too. You know, and I remember I was think, at Punk Rock Bowling that, last year when Trevor Keith was playing his guitar on stage and said, "Right after this, I'm going to go donate it to the Punk Rock Museum." And lo and behold, it's there the next day. I was like, "Damn!" <laughs> it, it, and it, and yep. he did, <laughs> and that and I, I don't know, man. Like I kind of geek out over it because there's some things that I never knew were going to fly, and when they started to gel together, it became a, an amazing experience to watch it. And then watch people find out yeah. about it. Hey, I could I could do this. And you go, yeah, you could do it right here. You know, and uh, you know, in the experience wise, you go to the museum and you check it out and you follow the narrative of, of punk rock. It's starting in New York and goes through over into the UK and then back in the eighties to to uh, you know Southern California and you can follow it through the nineties. And that's primarily the, the first floor. Second floor is the, the chapel gallery and the tattoo shop. And then on that top floor is the 2000s and the jam room and some exhibits for uh, that we do for that we use for temporary yeah. exhibits. Uh, so uh, it's really cool. But the coolest thing for me is being able to, you know, walk through those halls and go, that's the thing that I love, you know, whether it's Joe Strummer's guitar or whether it's Tim Armstrong's guitar that he used in Operation Ivy, you know, it's a, a bullet that Lemmy's ashes are in that you can, you know, mm -hmm. uh, of when he passed away and you start to look around and you start to find these moments and uh, musical moments for me. You talked about, oh, I found Hello Rock for you from Less Than Jake and I, I, I did this and it was a yeah. moment uh, of of punk rock music that hits you in a certain way when right before maybe about four days before the museum opened, I walked through, uh, the, the hallways, uh, downstairs and I was blown away. And at those moments, that's it, you know, fat records. I have, you know, I have a, a less than Jake, uh, letter from fat saying, don't quit our day jobs. <laughs> 
when we tried to get on fat. Uh, <laughs> so I don't know, man. Like I, I, there's moments of that I'm super proud. There's moments that I'm in awe. There's moments that I didn't think that were going to happen, but have happened. And we're coming up on a year of all those, all those things wrapped together. It's a year, April yeah. 1st. And I was going to say, you know, I remember obviously listening to like Pez Corliss and Jake and, you know, um, uh, losers and uh, losers and Kings or something like that. Kings and losers. Um, before hello rock view came out and then we all, all my friends and I went to buy hello rock view on day one. We're like, let's listen to it. We all put it in. We're just like, Holy shit. I know there's things like that for you. Like I know there's like the family photo, uh, wall where it has like behind the scenes backstage, obviously all the pictures where it shows like, you know, warp tours and stuff like that, where you gotta be just sitting there going like, fuck, that was like the first time where I was like in a room with somebody who I knew was going to be like, 30 years later, people are going to be talking about this person or something like that. I'm sure that you just have memories like that, but like from the other side, not from the fan side, but from the band side, right? I, I from, from everything, yeah. right. From, uh, I, I'm, I'm a, my love is punk rock music. Right. So as a fan, there's plenty, right. Uh, oh my God. It's like, you're looking at, you're, you're looking at something from bad religion and I go, Oh, the same thing. I remember me and my friends, you know, when No Control came out, you know, we were having beers and we were at a bonfire and someone got, came up with No Control and we played it and everybody was losing their shit. Like, oh, my God, this is amazing. Or when I found Lookout Records and uh, found Crim Shrine and Operation Ivy and Isocracy, Sam I Am, like all those moments, man, as a punk rock fan uh, come flooding back when I'm in the museum. Yeah. But then there's the opposite side of that as a band member where you go, oh, we toured. I remember when we toured with Bad Religion. I remember when on that Warp Tour, we were there during that time. I remember when X, Y, Z. And it starts to flood back like that. But the third part to all of that, I, I released a lot of records from bands. So when you go, and I'm looking at Fall Out Boy, there's a picture from Take This to Your Grave that was used, that picture was used on the the album cover and those moments flood back yeah. to and go oh my god i remember that you know or ann beretta i had released an ann beretta records and there's something from them there and you, it's just uh it, it hits me in, in a lot of different ways from releasing the records to being friends with a lot of bands to being on tour with a lot of bands to being a fan of a lot of punk rock bands it it is it's heavy yeah, yeah. And, and the best way possible. And one of my favorite uh, moments of Less Than Jake that I got to experience was at a Warp Tour and I think Minneapolis, Minnesota, or just on the outskirts of Minneapolis, Minnesota, where you guys started a gigantic circle pit around the, the, the um, sound tent. And I was like, that's, I, I was like, I backed up out to like just get a view of what it looked like because there was like a little hill. And I was like, there are got got to be like 4,000 people in this circle pit right now. It's like the biggest thing I ever saw. I was like, that is huge. And that was one of the coolest things I ever seen in person. I was like, "Holy shit, that's awesome!" <laughs> that's yeah. awesome. I, I mean, dude, it, 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 it's funny because Warp Tour, uh, full of those moments, yeah. right? T tons, right, uh, of moments like that. Whether it was at you know barbecue after the shows were over, and you're hanging out with with bands that you only heard yeah. before, you know, and then now you're talking and you're becoming you know friends and you have these moments that you're shared together, but it's like there was a, a, a pinnacle of warp tour for less than Jake, uh, very similar thing that you just had mentioned, uh, where we were during a few summers doing, Oh, circle or, you know, circle pit around the sound tent, but we tried one and it was a figure <laughs> eight around both sound tents. <laughs> So there was a sound, there was a stage that was to the left of us. So Did you guys not realize we that they were going to cross paths at one point? <laughs> yeah, there was, there was, but there was definitely plenty of that. So I don't know, like, it, again, when you're, when you're in the museum and you're looking and there's parts of, there's a, a, a you know, an exhibit room of, of Warp Tour. Uh, I stand in there every time I'm like, and I think about, oh yeah, Kevin Lyman making, you know, hamburgers that night and him. Uh, becoming our manager at some point in time. He was manager of Lesson yeah. Jake for a little bit. And I remember him sitting on the bus. And I remember uh, pitching him uh, Fuel by Ramen to partner with me for Fuel by Ramen. 
and him going, no, I don't see it. I don't see it. <laughs> and then uh, you seem to be getting a just, lot of rejections again, that turn into successes, which is a good thing. <laughs> you know what? Uh, that's that's what it's based on, though, without getting without getting too uh, overly out of the, the orbit of what we're talking about. I'll bring it into this real quick just because you said it. It's that, like, you have to learn how to surf metaphorically, yeah. right? That here comes this thing, you either have to surf it or you continually get hit yeah. by it, right? So no matter what, Fat Records didn't want to release Pezcorp. Well, we found Asian Man Records, you know, Dill Records at the time that turned into Asian Man, and that turned into such a good thing, you know? And, oh, well... Uh, this didn't happen. Uh, well, you know, Kevin Lyman didn't want to do Feel By with me. Okay, that's cool. I partnered up with another friend. His name's John. And that took it into a whole nother place that I don't know if it would have yeah. been, right? Or got yeah. there. So you just have to learn to, if you're in a band or anything creative, man, like you just can't sit there and let it hit you. You have to learn how to maneuver on opportunities that are given to you or opportunities that are never given yeah. to you, right? You, you have to learn that that self-preservation. But that, that metaphor I use a lot, it's that you have to learn to surf, man, like, or you'll continually just get pounded by a yeah. wave. And like, there's no success there, yeah. man. You have to, to know. Yeah. And if you to, give up after the you know, first wave hits you, you're probably not going to be successful, that's for sure. <laughs> you're never going to learn to yeah. surf that way, my friend. <laughs> All right, so obviously let's kind of bring it back into the topics that we we're talking about. But the now obviously bringing all this together, it's been a year. It's been a wild ride on the Punk Rock Museum. I know you've done uh, guided tours and stuff like that. But there actually is going to be a celebration, right? It's going to have a concert. It's going to have some other stuff going on. The concert's got, you know, headlined by the Vandals. Love the Vandals. I remember I, see, I saw them at the same Warped Tour I saw you where, you know, the climbing on the speakers and, you know, going crazy and you know doing all their hilarious songs and stuff then it's got get dead which is just one of the best live bands you'll ever see last gang soldier of destruction sakura and las vegas band suburban Rest resistance which is a, always a good time uh are there other cool events that are going to be lined up that's kind of coinciding with this i know there probably are but that's why well, i bring well, it up yeah i mean on on the 29th uh march 29th on that friday we're gonna have an opening of a temporary exhibit called my shot which is an all-female uh photography uh exhibit uh has allison braun it has marla watson naomi peterson uh you know it has uh ajani has fair chic uh Sheiky, uh and uh so that's friday then Saturday, we're going to have an investors and shareholders and a contributors party at the museum on Sunday, Easter Sunday of yeah. all of all Sundays. Uh, that happens to be uh, the Vandal show that you just mentioned with Get Dead and Last Gang and, and some Vegas locals. Uh, then on Monday, uh, the city of Las Vegas had proclaimed April 1st Punk Rock Day for the city of Las Vegas. So the mayor and a bunch of council people are going to come down, bestow the day on us. Uh, and, uh, we're going to have a good time, man. Like a uh, four day celebration of punk rock music and the punk rock. Museum. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's one of those things that this is, you know, this is an opportunity for anyone who hasn't been to the punk rock museum. If it's, if it, you know, you're in Vegas, obviously you're planning to be here during that weekend. This would be the time to come to the punk rock uh, museum absolutely go to the show on sunday uh i'm i told my wife you know she she's she's like you know catholic her whole family's catholic i'm like i i'm gonna go to a punk show instead of going to easter and so yeah <laughs> yeah i mean uh i'll i'll go with this that on april 1st uh it's free to get in the museum yep so anyone that went i don't know about uh you know going and i haven't gone but i'm gonna be kind of near vegas or in vegas it's free to get in all day, April 1st. Come in, yep. scrutinize, or come in and enjoy 12,000 square feet of punk rock music. Yeah, and I, and I can attest per personally and firsthand from, you know, anytime like punk rock bowling comes through or an event like this happens, you never know who you're going to see. I mean, Flea showed up during punk rock bowling because they happen to be playing like almost simultaneously as punk rock bowling uh, here in Vegas. 
Uh, you know, you get big bands. Sometimes you'll even just see a band jump into the Pennywise garage and start playing there. So I know that there's going to be a ton of surprises. So if you're thinking about going, absolutely go. We're not going to spill the beans here. So just be surprised. <laughs> no, but I, I can tell you, uh, and you hit on it, it's that we, we say it amongst uh, the collective. And it's you never know what's going to happen. And you never know who you're going to run into or or anything at the punk rock museum. Yeah. So I would think that uh, during that weekend, there'll be some fun stuff that's happening, yeah. but I can tell you this uh, low, low ticket warning. There's only three tickets left to the Vandal oh, damn. show. Yeah. <laughs> that so, is quite low. <laughs> that is, that is three, three left. That is it. So we're going to call it a sellout yeah. right now. Yep. So another thing, obviously, that you have in, that you're involved with, and you touched on this earlier, is the tattoo shop. I mean, you are obviously, a, you know, tattoo graphic. You get into the art. I mean, you know, your your social media profile is just your graphic design, but and your art and your tattoo art. But talk to me about like how this became, you know, a life's journey for you, and how that kind of, you know, how you kind of imparted that upon the, the museum itself. Well, you know, here's the thing, and I, I touched on it earlier. It's that with Less Than Jake, there was points where you go, well, we have to get T-shirts done, uh, you know, for, for Less Than Jake. What, how are we going to do it? We really don't have any money, uh, and we really don't know anyone who's an artist. So you go, I'll do it. I'll figure <laughs> it out. So you figure out a T-shirt design, and you figure out how you're going to silkscreen your own T-shirts. And you do it. That was the beautiful thing. And that still continually is the beautiful thing about punk rock music. It's the do it yourself uh, yeah. ethos. It, it's going, not waiting around for someone to do it for you. You will learn how to do it and you do it for yourself. And then if people come back and go, uh oh, I could do that or I could help with that, you go, great. That's awesome. Yeah. Come on. Right. So for me, it was learning how to do art and design and silk screening and uh, later merchandise design and merchandise ideas and uh, uh, creation of how to lay out a CD package or how to lay out a uh, LP uh, design to a template. That was all because there was no one there and the people that could do it that you could pay were, were way too expensive. Yeah. So, I just learned how to do that. And throughout the years, it's something that besides uh, personal art, uh, I just would do it for fun. Someone would go, oh, I need a T-shirt design. Oh, I'll do it. You know, front bottoms, I wound up doing like, uh, I think, nine different T-shirt designs for the front bottoms just as a favor to a friend of mine where I went, okay, like, no problem. I can, I can do that. That's yeah. cool. And it was just a matter of uh, using, you know, sort of my personal time to continue down that sort of art path. And I've released books uh, that I've done of art that, I, that I've that i made and poetry and all this other stuff, but it's more so just to continually to be creative, yeah. man. Like, and I feel that if the minute that I stop doing that, the minute I can like actually feel there's something missing, right? So in this time of the museums, you know, oh, the museum needs these things. I, I like to do them and be a part because I'm very busy otherwise yeah. to be with the museum and the tattoo shop. I own another tattoo shop that's in Gainesville as well. So besides being a dad and being a husband and doing all those things, I, I need a creative outlet. And that's either writing some music or that's doing art or that's doing art for other people or graphic design, uh, the original logo. And it's still, uh, in use in a lot of merch that the museum does. I did. Yeah. Right. And that wasn't because I'm the best graphic designer because I'm not, uh, but it was that, Hey, we could ask someone to do a logo, but it would wind up cost $5,000. Yeah. And at that time we didn't have yeah. that. Yeah, and that's the thing that I really appreciate about what you're talking about with the you know the DIY ethos and, and the punk rock kind of you know in in DNA or whatever you want to call it. But you know bands today and and always you know they complain oh you know 
we want to get some help with graphic design, but everybody we talk to is too expensive, but you still want to pay the graphic designer. They deserve to be paid that, right? But it's like, well, if you can't pay a graphic designer, learn how to do it or try your best and then get it done. Yes. I mean, out of, out of any given idea that comes and, and if there's a block in front of it, there's a way up around or through that block and, punk rock and punk rock and generally speaking as a music like as a genre uh is a lot more forgiving than a lot of other places yeah. yeah you don't have to have like the perfect graphic design i mean you could literally just sketch out some words or something and put like stick figures in the background it doesn't matter like as long as it's you know interesting and appealing people will find it you know they'll buy it they'll do whatever or or, or authentic yeah. man like you, everybody forgets that it's like you know, there's an authenticity, like, and that's just not some bullshit, like, marketing, like, kind of jargon. It's whoever you are, and you're putting it out that way, it, it artistically, whether it's music or graphic design or any kind of visual that's attached to it, or a video, whatever. Uh, if it's authentically you, authentically the band, yeah. then it doesn't, it doesn't yeah. matter, man. It doesn't matter what anyone else thinks. That's who you are, and that's where you are there's that snapshot of who you are as a band right yeah. then, you know, and that's songs that you're writing. It's uh, art that you're attaching yourself to. It's the visual that you're attaching yourself to with a video or, or whatever. And that's it, man. That's who you are in the timeline that you're yeah. existing. I mean, that, the descendants, dude, that's awesome. the descendants are a great example of that. The Milo character that they've used for 40 years. I mean, technically speaking, most people could probably draw that, but they did it, they used it, and now it's become an icon, right? And I think that helped other people realize, you know what? We don't have to have, like, the craziest graphics. We just got to do something that is related to us that, you know, kind of pitches that authenticity, like you said. 100%. Yeah. Very cool. Well, obviously, there's one other thing that you have that uh, that's going on this year, and that's the band The Inevitables. Obviously, you no longer play or tour with uh, Les and Jake, but you do play uh, music, and you cre- you've created a couple, at least one full album, I think maybe an EP over the last few years with The Inevitables, which is, you know, it's a great band. I, I, I've listened to it again this morning, uh, you know, the last album and some of the new singles. I, I really like it. I think it's it's kind of like less than Jake, but kind of without some of those heavier metal-y sounding guitars. It's kind of more straight punk ska instead of like the metal kind of stuff in there. Uh, so kind of talk to me. What, what's what's the, uh, you know, the Inevitables got in store and, and when's the album coming out? You know what? It, it, it was supposed to come out during the summer, but it is officially on hold until I get out of the the tunnel that is... <laughs> Uh, the museum yeah. for the moment, right? So uh, I, I'm going to say, uh, I, I yes, on hold yeah. for the moment a- until we could get it. But I can tell you just some things that uh, there is a record that uh, the second LP, the second full length, all the songs are written. We released one single uh, of it already. And I think that, uh, between everybody else's schedule and commitments, uh, including mine, we have to put it on hold. Sure. Uh, I'm hoping until uh, late fall, okay. but probably next okay. year, unfortunately. But that is yeah. true. The one thing I do want to say about it, though, is that you're, you, I believe it's your graphic design work that's like on the cover. I think is, is it like yours and is it a collaboration or how does that work? It's it, it, it's a it's a collab, yeah. right? It's that uh, depending on who, what release that you're looking at, there's a lot of graphic designers and a lot of illustrators that have not only did the comic yeah. book but the covers and everything like that. But as far as world building, as far as the idea of the comic and of the storylines and the art of the art ideas, but not the execution. Yeah. Uh, that that's uh myself and uh obi from westbound train and alex who plays in and big d yeah. so uh but i've done some t-shirt designs and i've done other graphic work for the inevitables but uh there's a a ton of other folks that again 
much more talented <laughs> than I am and ever could you probably be have that, more time uh, on their hands to do the graphic book. design as well. You know what? That's a lot of it, you know, because you go, hey, I would love to do this and it would take me uh, 20 hours to do or you could, uh, you know, hire someone and it would take them an yeah. hour and a half to do it. <laughs> so uh, I, I, I usually go with uh, hire someone for uh, an hour yeah. and a half instead of me go, oh, I'll just futz around with this for for, you know, uh, 24 hours until I could yeah. get it there. Like I just spent a day and I'm probably going to have to redo this at some point. So that was a waste. <laughs> it, it, it's it's true. But, you know, again, it goes with uh, learning how to do yeah. it. Right. So if you learn how to do it, then when you do have someone else do it for you, you can actually talk logically instead of like, yeah, this X and the Y and the thingamajig. Yeah. Uh, and they okay. look at you and go, yeah. this guy has I, no I, idea I what he wants. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. And, and you know, there, there's some beauty in that, yeah, too. Exactly. Just let the creative person be creative and you just sit back and watch and hopefully it all works out. But Sometimes yeah. sometimes yeah. that is. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's pretty much all I got for you, Vinny. I think, it, you know, it was an honor talking to you. I want to thank you so much for, you know, spending the time with me today. Uh, you know, I can't wait to, you know, see the, the concert you know, be there for the, the one year anniversary. I know you obviously give them some more insight into the inevitables and what they've got coming down the pipeline. So uh, for anybody who's hoping for that release this year, it might be squeaking out early next year. So um, Vinny's just a, a busy man, so it's going to have to wait, but you know, gonna have to yeah, wait, my friend. for anybody who's going to be in Vegas during this time, make sure to go to get your tickets. There's as Vinny said, three left. So by the time we're done recording this, that already might be sold out. Uh, but get down there anyway. Uh, March 31st, obviously, make sure to go to the, the, the Punk Rock Museum during that weekend at some point, even if you don't go to the concert, because there will be some obviously, you know, legends walking the halls, just, you know, meandering through there, just like they always do when there's a big event. And I highly recommend doing a guided tour as you get to hear straight from some punk legends, their own anecdotes and stories of the evolution of punk and the history from the people who actually made the damn history, right? So it's one of the coolest yeah. things you'll ever see. And if you learn... You have, you have Warren, that, that weekend, Warren Fitzgerald, Joe Escalante, they'll be doing that. KJ from Chicks Dig It will yeah. be there doing guided tours. Guided tours, again, we didn't touch on it, but for, uh, before we wrap up, that is one of the, the, the best things at the museum, besides the jam I room. It's being able to hear the history of punk rock from people who lived yeah. it, from living legends. You could hear when I was on tour with this, when I did that, and uh, it's definitely worth the, the little bit of extra money that you'd spend on that to be able to just kind of listen to how, how they found punk yeah. rock and, and what it was like being in a band and still maybe in yeah, a band. One of the biggest influences on my personal life, Matt Pinfield did a – a recent one, I think it was last month, he did it like two or three days, and I was like, I missed it, but I was like trying my damn best to get there. But that guy, you know, he's like the encyclopedia of all music, and I wanted, you know, that's one of the reasons why I ever started liking music, because he kept feeding good music out. And I was like, oh, MTV's actually got good music. You just have to stay up till midnight to watch it. But, yeah. <laughs> it's truth on that, man. Matt, that was one of the things for me, missing the Matt Pinfield tour was depressing. Yeah, yep. I was like, to Damn say it. the least but anyway well let's wrap it up and if you guys learned anything or enjoyed our time together today please be sure to like and comment on this video and subscribe to the channel as well also share this episode with your friend or just put it up on social media those small actions actually make a huge difference to our channel if you want to check out our awesome music blog or pick up some cool merch and gear head to poweredbyrock.com to see what's good there that's our show for today i'll see you soon for the next episode until then rock on Supposed to be easy